that okay, on now? Okay, we'll turn it on. Is it on now? It's on now. All right, so we're gonna start today. We, we got everything besides our little chit chit chat, yeah, so, so that's, that's all right. No worries. We uh we just talked about changing the oil. If you're watching the yeah, race, which so, I did, got nauseous, a little woozy. All right, I'm caught up. Now you're caught up. It's all good. So we're gonna start with the with the dirty dozen. You can uh, Google the dirty dozen uh, if you don't want to bother to write them down. But this year, the top of the list is strawberries. They are always at the top of the list, which is so sad. I, I love strawberries. We do have strawberries, but we get frozen organic strawberries. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they're in my oatmeal every day. Yeah. So get organic strawberries if you can. Uh, spinach is number two on the list, which kind of surprised me Yeah, a that bit. surprises me as well. Um, nectarines, we don't eat nectarines, so non-issue for us. Apples, we do get organic apples. Mm -hmm. um, grapes, we don't eat grapes, which is so sad. Because we like grapes. We like grapes, but it, getting organic grapes is so expensive that that's just something we don't get. And we, we look at them. I say, if you can find them. They have them at the grocery store nearby wow. here in this, in this section, the, the organic, organic section. section. Yeah, but they're expensive. Yeah. And we see them at Costco, but they're never organic. And it's mm -hmm. just like, oh, it's so sad. It is. Uh, cherries, which I don't know. Have we seen organic cherries? Do I don't you know? I believe we have, no. Yeah. Like like the uh, summer cherries? It just says cherries. Oh, well, that's so, a bummer. I know. <sighs> so we'll have to see if, what, if Costco has uh, organic ones this year or not. Yeah. We do um, get organic frozen ones again, but it'd be nice to get fresh, you know, fruit. Definitely, ones a lot. definitely. Peaches and pears. Again, we don't eat a lot of them. I haven't really eaten peaches and pears since I left California because I haven't been able to find ones that I felt like were yummy. They don't hold up to our childhood memories. They don't hold up to my memories. It's true. Right. Being able to pick them straight off the tree in my mm -hmm. parents' house. When I was a kid, I used to eat strawberries this big. Yeah. I don't, I'm just kidding. New to the list, Dirty Dozen this list this year, is bell peppers and hot peppers, which is super disappointing yeah. because we do eat a lot of uh, peppers. Um, I did notice within the last year or so that when I washed the peppers, I felt like they smelled like Roundup. Huh. I did feel like they smelled like pesticides or herbicides or something. So I, I guess in that way, it doesn't surprise me that they're on the list, but it is disappointing that they made the list this year. So like, you know what it seems like to me? It seems like once... As consumers, we start eating more of a particular type of vegetable or fruit. To keep up with demand. Right. They start spraying it, yeah, mm -hmm. to keep the crops bigger and stronger, I guess. Another one that's on the list that I did not recall being on the list previously, although it may have, is celery. Hmm. So, yeah, something to consider. Well, we don't eat a lot of celery either. I put it in stews and stuff. Yeah. It's one of my, like, six foundational things, but, so you eat more celery than I think you think. Hmm. Mm. What I think. Hmm. And then the final one, tomatoes. And we have switched to eating organic tomatoes, although in the summertime, I do grow our own. And so obviously those are organic. So hopefully we'll be getting those plants in very shortly. Yeah, I do yeah. have sweet peas, beets, radishes. I started outside. We have a kale plant, but we don't need <sighs> kale. Eat. It's so sad because kale bothers up my stomach now. So we're not, we're not going to eat it. So I'm not sure if I'm going to give it to the neighbor or if I'm just going to compost it. We did get a new compost container. Thing yeah, it's a big excited. compost container. And it's full and I'm super excited yeah. about that. We have a little doggy that decided compost was good eats. So yeah. we had to get it up so off the ground. So we had to get it off the ground. I couldn't use a compost pile yeah. anymore. So um, citrus is not on this list, but 90% of citrus fruits tested had toxic pesticides on them. And you may think, oh, well, you know, but you peel them, so it doesn't matter. That's what I was just going to say. They test fruit as it would be consumed. Oh. So they wash it, they scrub it, they uh, peel it if it requires peeling. And the thing about citrus is if you peel it with your hands, you know, you peel it, your whole, you touch it. There's no way, like you can't peel it without right. touching it. Right. Or if you cut it, you push the knife through it. So wow. that's, citrus, that's, citrus uh... is on the list, but it, it well, so it's not on... The dirty, the dirty dozen. dozen, but it did say that 90 So it didn't rank as high as the top 12. I mean, obviously, right. it could have been 13 or 14, which is nothing to write home about. You know? Right, exactly. So something to consider about citrus. And we do eat a lot of clementines. We do. We like. We I don't really think ours do. are organic either. I don't think so. We're looking yeah. over there because <laughs> that's where we keep looking. We're but even, gonna tell even us. if, even if, yeah, because even if there were still any left, I don't know if there are. There's but, one. But the bag's not there. The bag's so. not there, so it's not going to tell us anything. But yeah, we look over there like, oh, yeah, that's where the clementines live. But uh, yeah, it didn't help us any. So that's your list. I'll run through it again one more time. Strawberries, spinach, nectarines, apples, grapes, cherries, peaches, pears, bell and hot peppers, celery and tomatoes. Mm. 
So organic. Those are the ones if you're to you know make your organic dollar stretch. Those are the ones you want to look for that are organic. And I think it's also important to mention that even though there is a dirty dozen and you should avoid those if you know if you have other options, it's still better than eating animal products because mm -hmm. remember now you're going to eat the animal products which ate all this stuff, all the pesticides. Plus all the hormones and stuff that they put in the animals themselves yep. and the other type of feeds they eat. And then you're eating, of course, you're getting the damage of eating animal protein. So The higher up the food chain you eat, the lot more toxins that you're ingesting. That's right. just the reality of it. Oh, I should have mentioned that this is from the Environmental Working Group. Right. That's Based a, out in California, I believe. That's who uh, creates this yeah. list every year. So here's the Clean 15. These Yay. are things you don't have to spend your, your money on for to get organic. And this, the second one always surprises me. So avocados, top of the list. They're clean. You can eat those. That's fine. Sweet corn. Yeah, which it is... It always surprises me yeah. that sweet corn is on here because corn is one of the most highly um, GMO'd and pesticide uh, crops out there, but apparently not the ones that humans eat. Apparently that's more true for the stuff that the cattle eat. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, it's interesting. Doggy just went to her bed. That makes me happy. Um, pineapples are on the clean 15. Yes. Yay! Because we like pineapples. We, we do. get them occasionally. Onions. Onions. We, we eat, eat a lot, lot of onions, <laughs> both red and white. Right. We eat It'll a lot of onions. If we drank such a thing. Sorry. <laughs> that was a jinx. Um, papayas, which we don't really eat papayas. No, papaya, you know, I don't know why we don't eat papayas. I think we like them, but we just never get them. Uh, yeah, I guess it's just not something um, we, we come We will across. go for mangoes. Yeah. Are they on that list? No. Uh. Um, <laughs> Frozen sweet peas, so you don't need organic frozen sweet peas. Eggplant, eggplant is good stuff. Asparagus, broccoli, cabbage, we do eat a lot of cabbage. Mm -hmm. um, kiwi, kiwi, kiwi fruits, they are not, I uh, don't have to worry about those. Cauliflower, mm. good for you stuff. Mushrooms, we told you last year when we found out mushrooms were on this list that we stopped buying organic mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So we did make that change. Honeydew, which if you have watched us for a year, you know I don't like honeydew. She doesn't like honeydew. I do, but it does leave a raspy kind of feeling in your neck. I, think. I just feel like it's always either too ripe and it's mushy, or it's not ripe enough and it's like crunchy and yeah. green tasting. I've had yeah. it to where it's, it's pretty consistent. Yeah. And we like watermelon too, so when watermelon comes in, we'll be getting that. Yeah, and cantaloupe is the last on the 15. Yeah. And if you get a good cantaloupe, they're, they're pretty good. But again, cantaloupe is a hard one to get. Sometimes yes. they're pretty awful. So that is the Environmental Working Group, the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen, and where you can uh, spend your uh, organic money and where you can save it. Right. Exactly. So that's that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about why it is so hard to eat the good things and so challenging or so easy to eat the not so good things. things. Yeah. Um, and part of that is, and, and you know, I, I was talking to somebody, I think I mentioned this in our Q&A last, last month, that somebody was asking how to help, how to store her vegetables better, and my point was, eat them. <laughs> I got a place to store them. Because what happens is people buy produce, and then they sit on their counter, and they eat other things. Mm -hmm. And so then their produce goes, goes bad, and they blame the produce, but it, it's because they're eating other things. And mm -hmm. the reason that it's so easy to eat other things is that... Stuff that's manufactured has been manufactured to hit the bliss point, and that is the perfect balance of salt, sugar, and fat that turns off your body's ability to say, I've had enough, and turns on your cram function, which is the function that says, eat as much of this as we can so that we can put on pounds to survive the winter. And they do studies for this. I mean, this is not just somebody said, oh, this will probably work. They've actually tested it on, you know, on groups of people and different combinations of stuff till they've got it to where... People can't put this stuff down. Right? That's mm -hmm. what we're going to sell. Yep, and it, it's called it's called the pleasure trap, and that's the fact that when you start eating these foods that are uh, balanced for salt, sugar, and fat, to turn on the bliss point, your taste buds downregulate for the sweetness because it's it's overwhelming. And then when you eat real food, your taste buds are downregulated, and they, they're like, ugh, this tastes awful. Mm -hmm. And that, so they can't. It doesn't taste good. So then you end up in this situation where real food isn't satisfying and junk food hits your bliss point. And so it makes it super easy. And then really the only way to get through it is to just power through it. Yeah. There's no other option. You can get willpower fatigue and decision fatigue and it just becomes exhausting if you keep trying to you know, have a little bit of the bliss point foods and then trying to integrate healthy foods. It's better to go 100% um, and get away from all processed foods that are, you know, hitting that, that spot, that bliss point spot. 
Um, let's see. Let me, I'm, I have lots of notes, so let me go through them here in a second and see if there's anything this else. This has been a hot topic for sure. It has been, yeah. And the Pleasure um, Trap's a good book, by the way. It is. And there's, for... there's a um, TEDx talk about it, too. Yeah. Um, Dr. Dr. Lyle? Dr. Mm -hmm. Lyle? Is what is his name? Oh, I can't remember. Of course, I don't have it written here. But... Yeah, look if you if you look on uh, on YouTube for the Pleasure Trap, you'll get his TEDx talk and a couple of different videos, and I, I think we have them in our video store as well. So yeah, I you think can, you're right. If you if you Google the Pleasure Trap on the website, in the Whole Food Muscle Club, you'll find stuff about it and more notes, and more things about that as well. Um, let's see. This is about grit. That's a different different point. So let's go on to talking about Dr. Grundy and the plant based paradox. The plant paradox. So Dr. Grundy's whole thing is that lectins are bad for you. And he talks about how they're dangerous and you shouldn't eat them. And he talks about everything that, like apples and beans and anything that has lectins in them. Um, lectin is basically a type of protein. The only one that's actually dangerous for you are raw kidney beans. They're toxic. Don't eat raw kidney beans. And that's, isn't that what's based on this whole um, thesis, I guess? Is that the whole time when they were, when, was it, uh, was it somewhere in Asia, wasn't it? Japan, they, in Japan? 2006. Yeah, where they were grinding up uh, the kidney beans and using it as like a, a protein source. So somebody in Japan came up with this idea that you could lose weight by grinding raw kidney beans and using them, sprinkling them on food. And raw kidney beans are toxic. Right. They're not, they're not good for you. And so it was making people sick. And so this came up with this whole idea that, you know, beans are bad for you. But in reality... No, raw kidney beans are bad for you. Right. And once you cook them, and you don't even have to cook them all the way. You can, you, I might actually have the notes here about how long. You only have to cook them for a very short period of time for all the lectins to be broken down and to not be a problem. So the, the short answer is Dr. Grundy twists the science yeah. to make people afraid and you know, tells them that they need to you know, avoid all these plant foods, but then he also sells supplements to make up the difference. He's got the miracle cure. So if all the foods he's telling you to avoid are where you're gonna get your nutrients, and so then you have to buy his supplements to be able to um, get the nutrients you need. For me, watch out for anyone who's scaring you into buying their supplements. Yeah, buying their fix. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. You know, just go ahead and get yourself a little uh, cart and go out into the street and go ahead and do your snake oil. Yeah, so there's no science showing that lectins are bad, but there's tons and tons of sh science showing that foods that contain lectins are good for you. Right. So mm -hmm. in Dr. Yeah. Grundy's book, it, I think it was Dr. Greger went through and actually looked at all of his references and basically debunked all, Every the, one of them, all right. the references that... Dr. Grundy had about yeah. lectins and how they're bad for you. Don't quote me on this, or you can quote me on this. I might not be right. But I do think that there's parts in that book where he actually uses a reference that has nothing to do with what he's talking about. Or does it, the reference is backwards, is yeah. opposite. Or it's opposite. Yeah, so it's, um, it's unfortunate that someone with that kind of... Well, he's got a credential. Credentials, that's the problem. yeah, is, is misleading people. But no, to answer the question, basically, no, you don't have to worry about lectins. They're not something you need to be concerned about unless you're grinding kidney beans in a coffee grinder, which I recommend against. Right. So, yeah, don't worry about lectins. Don't eat raw beans. You'll be fine. We eat lots of beans. It's perfectly fine. We do. We have two different types today. I mean, bean, so bean consumption is correlated with less cancer. It, it's, it is correlated with longer life. Some people yeah. complain about it gives them gas. Over time, your body gets used to digesting them, and your gut bacteria adjust to being... Uh, for digesting protein, the animal protein, to digesting plant protein. And once you get there, you'll be fine, as long as you're not allergic to kale like I am. Mm. Makes me pat. It's a sad, sad state of affairs. Yeah, exactly. It takes about three weeks for your gut to adjust if you go 100%. If you're dabbling in being plant-based, then your gut bacteria isn't going to switch mm -hmm. over, and that makes it more challenging. Mm -hmm. So that's that. Do you have anything else you want to add about Lectins? No, I think you've said it all. All right. All right, let's see. Collagen. So I get, I, periodically we get questions about collagen. I know we've talked about it before, but I did want to go through it again since I, I did get another question about it. Is this the um, ed edible kind or the ingestible type? I mean, not I mean in injectable. Injectable. Type. So most of the time, um, peop, there's two kinds of collagen. There's the kind you put directly on your skin, 
and then it's the kind that you ingest. Now, first let's figure out what is collagen, and collagen is a protein. And it's what makes your skin elastic and, and whatnot. And so if you ingest it, your body's gonna break it down. Your body doesn't take a protein as, oh, this is collagen, I can just use that right here. Mm -hmm. It's not what happens, your body breaks it down. And so how, what kinds of, of protein you ingest, whether it's lectins or collagens or whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as it has amino acids in it, your body treats it the same way. So as far as ingesting collagen goes, it's not really a thing, it doesn't really matter. Right. It's not collagen to collagen. No, not the way it works. Now, putting it on your face, I didn't look a lot into that, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not certain what kind of collagen they use when it comes to face products. It may be animal-based, I would imagine it is, because mm -hmm. plant-based collagen is a little bit hard to come by. So if you are vegan, you probably don't want to do that anyway. But the most common source of collagen is bone broth. You, you'll see it as a protein supplement. Um, and the idea is that the benefits are leached from the bone through extensive boiling. And sometimes they add acids such as vinegar to get more of the bone to dissolve. I had an interesting conversation with my mother about this just within the last week about adding uh, vinegar to bones to get more out of them. And, and I explained this to her. It leaches the lead. I mean, that's, I was waiting for it to come out because I, 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 my back head said, but what about the lead? What about the lead? What about the lead? So when, when a, a body gets ingest lead in any way, shape, or form, and all of us do, it's just in the environment. Animals do. They're eating the grass. It's eating the dirt. It's in the environment. The way that the a mammal or a fowl protects themselves from that lead is it puts it in their bones. To, separate, to get it out of the system, it sets it in the bones. So if you then take those bones and you boil them, and especially if you boil them using vinegar, you're going to end up with lead in, in your uh, broth, whatever, whatever broth whatever you're, you're using. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So there's very little research that consuming amino acids specifically in a form make a difference. So bone broth being better, a better way to get them hasn't been shown to be a thing. It's got good marketing mm -hmm. behind it. You certainly see it as far as marketing, but all food protein is, like I said, it's just amino acids. So it doesn't really matter. It's broken down into the individual, individual components. Um, I don't recommend bone broth on multiple levels, but to the point, lead is a big reason. It's, mm -hmm. it's very dangerous. Um, there was a study that said chicken soup made with bones was very good for you if you were sick. But then if you read, actually read into the study, it was chicken soup loaded with vegetables. So it was probably the vegetables. Probably the vegetables. They probably had a little bit of a confounding variable there that they didn't consider, which was very odd to me. Right. Or maybe they did consider it and did it on they, purpose. They didn't give them the result they wanted. Didn't give them the same you know, answer. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. It is a poor source of amino acids, so collagen isn't even a great source of protein for you. You can get um, a richer source of collagen from green leafy vegetables. They're more of the building blocks, and then you have the additional benefits of the nutrients. So that's all good. Let's see. All animal products behave the same way. Casein, myofilibar. I can, why, do they say, why do they have these words that are so hard to say? If it doesn't have 15 syllables, they don't want it. So there's a whole bunch of different collect, connective tissues and whatnot. They're all, your body treats them all the same. Um... Iron and vitamin C helps your body to produce co uh, collagen. So if you want to produce your own collagen, make sure you're getting enough iron and vitamin C. And free radicals call, uh, cause alter alterations. I can talk, really. Alterations to the collagen and elastic tissue leading to premature aging of the skin and connective tissue. So if, you, you know, if you're getting enough antioxidants from eating your veggies, it's going to help your skin. My, uh, the woman that does my, does my facial always says to me, you have such great skin. I never would have guessed that you played volleyball in the sun for so many years. Mm. Thank you. I'm yeah, happy about that. That's it. That makes me happy. So to combat free radicals, eat plants, limit and avoid alcohol, avoid processed foods, red meat, and processed meats. But um But I'll bump. So there's that one. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing good. I got eight minutes? Okay, I got eight minutes. Is that what it says? 50, 52? Two. Yeah, okay. So we'll get through nutritional yeast real quick, and then we'll talk to you a little bit about some things going on in the Whole Food Muscle Club. So, got a question about what, what is nutritional yeast? More to the point, though, is it something I need to eat? Because this, this person was saying they're not really a fan, they don't like it very much, and do they? is it something they need to figure out how to eat? The short answer is no. You don't have to. Um, we like it. We do tend to put it on, especially uh, pasta. pasta. 
uh, tomato pizza. based tomato based stuff. Yeah, right. we use it in pizza. If you've seen the pizza recipe, you soup. know. We do like it in Always, soup. Always not this time of year. No soup. No soup. I see that. It makes him very sad. He's a soup guy, but I don't make soup this time of year. It's just how it goes. Um, but I think this time of year we eat less of it because we don't have soup. We're not having the casseroles. Yeah, only if we have pasta or if we have pizza. Well, oh. We do have pizza once a week. Though. We do, and it's fun. That's our date night. Yeah. We have we make that the the pizza, which the recipe and how I make it is uh, there's a video on that, so you can go and find that. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you a little bit about nutritional yeast. Um, it's the same species as yeast used to make beer, bread, and kombucha. Kum I can never say that word. Kombucha. Um, except that it's inactive, so there's no leavening. It doesn't actually cause rising. It's grown in molasses. It's deactivated by heat, washed, pasteurized, dried, and then crumbled. So that's mm. what you're getting. And I know the one that we get, we get it in bulk. It is so dusty. Yeah. Like you have to be so careful with it. Like if you use it and then push the air out of the bag to close it, it goes everywhere. Breathing it is not ideal. No, that's not the way you want to just. No, not. Not usually. So it's often fortified with B vitamins, but not always. Um, and don't, it's not necessary. So you don't, don't look for one specifically that's right, exactly. fortified. And even if it is fortified, do not use it as your source for B12. Do take your B12 once or twice a week, as, as we've talked about before, mm -hmm. because there's, you're just not going to get enough B12 from nutritional yeast. You're not eating enough. There's, there's no way, I don't care how much you like nutritional yeast, that you are eating enough nutritional yeast to get the B12, to get the B12 you need. So just yeah. take... Just take it uh, in a supplement like we've suggested. It has more protein per calorie than meat. It's about 50% protein by weight. So if you're worried about getting enough protein, sprinkle some nutritional Where's yeast on Where's my protein? Stuff. Right there. Yep, yep, no worries. Um, it has some zinc, psyllium, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium. So lots of different things. It, it's just generally a pretty healthy thing to eat. A lot of different things it does. There's antioxidants. It's antibacterial and antiviral, which mm -hmm. you know that's fun. Always good to have those kind of things. It has been shown to help lower blood cholesterol levels and improve immune function. So that's why we didn't get COVID. That's not why we didn't that's get it. COVID. We didn't get COVID because we weren't anywhere to get COVID. Right, and we were pretty cautious, I think. Oh, did we tell them about our, the gym situation? Oh, we'll tell you about the gym situation yeah. in a minute. Um, if you get too much B12, you probably know this. Your urine will turn neon. If you take in too much nutritional yeast, you're going to have the same effect if it's um, fortified. Wow, lost the word, fortified. So if you have a yeast allergy, uh, Crohn's disease, you're going to want to um, want to avoid it just because there's some issues with that. Um, if you have a, the genetic mutation on the MTHFR, you're going to want to avoid folic acid, which is... Um, also in nutritional yeast. Call the manufacturer if you have celiac or if you are gluten intolerant because um, sometimes it's grown in a medium that includes grain. So if you are gluten intolerant or have celiac disease, you are going to want to call the manufacturer and ask them specifically how it's, how it's produced and yeah. if it's safe for you because it may very well not be. Mm. Something to consider. To know. Yeah. And I think I have one more page of notes here. It does not contain MSG, which is good because I'm allergic to MSG. It gives me food poisoning symptoms. Um, we buy it, like I said, in bulk from our natural food store. You can get it on Amazon. You could also get it, um, and most grocery stores carry it in small plastic containers, although it's outrageously expensive yeah. that way. I think we pay, how much is it? Is $10, it $10 a pound? A pound? Yeah. And a pound, because it is so fluffy, is a lot. Yes. It's a lot of product. Um, store it in a cool, cool, dry place. Um, up to two years, and then, you know, we use it pretty much on anything that has a liquid base to it, soups, casseroles, pizza, mm -hmm. All um, good stuff. lasagna. Yeah, it, yes. Yeah, and we're, we're going to make tacos this weekend. I'll probably put some in there just to give it some umami flavor. So, all right, so that answers all of your questions. Now I wanted to talk to you real quick. Let's tell them a little bit about our gym situation, the drama. So, we no longer go to a gym. We don't. We I mean, don't belong to a gym. Uh, honestly, for me, I was getting less and less inspired by going to the local Y, which is the gym we belonged here. Um, and so we've, we've, for a while, put around the idea of getting equipment in our home. Uh, and then an opportunity came for us to do that. And so we did, and we have a universal type of machine. It's we, a crossover that yeah. has the 
things that go up and down and two weight stacks and you right. can do, you know. Yeah. The thing we're being creative about is legs. Right, so that's the, and, and the thing is we do want to get some leg equipment. We've several times tried to buy uh, gyms have gone out of business. They're on auctions. But people are bidding this stuff up way too high. Yeah. Uh, and it's because you can't even get it. You can't get the stuff. It's just right now. Because of COVID, nothing's being manufactured along these lines. So yeah. um, I've got my eye on a couple of uh, home versions of this equipment. That I think Leg equipment. Work well for us, but we're going to have to wait till all this stuff passes over before we can get it. But, I mean, we're, getting, we're still getting leg workouts. It's not awful. Well, and I can certainly get a leg workout. I, I can do enough of what I need to do on the piece of equipment we have. I think for you it's a little harder because you want to go so much heavier. Right. But I'm, hey, I'm making do. Um, the one thing I do miss is the Espresso bike, which if you uh, you know, ever saw any of our workouts, you know I like to ride the Espresso. Mm -hmm. um, but with it getting warmer, I'm, gonna, I'm riding outside again, so mm -hmm. that's not really going to be an issue probably until, say, October. And maybe at that point, you know, we'll get one or we'll do something different. An opportunity or, will come up. Yeah, we do have an AMT here, so that's an option. And I do get more exercise, cardio type exercise now because I play outside with the dog. Right. So that does, does make a difference as far as that goes. So it is very, very strange to not be members of a gym. Yeah. It's, it's a time, little weird for us. First time for me in probably, I don't know, 40 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's nuts. Yeah, it's been a long time since I haven't had a gym membership. So um, very different, but it is working for us. We are enjoying it. It, it does give us extra time because we're not mm -hmm. spending the half hour, you know, drive, get your stuff in the locker, blah, blah, whatever on each side. So it's giving us an extra hour yeah. in our day. And I mean, and with the price that we were paying for the gym, one year of not going to a gym is going to more than pay for the piece of equipment we purchased. So. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's kind of the update of our working out. We are still working out just in our basement rather yeah. than... And I, I have to tell you, to be honest, I need to have the motivation of having people around. And so for me, it's good that Russ is super motivated because I think that if it were... I, I know, because I've had gym equipment. This is the third time in my life I've bought gym equipment. I know for me that on my own, without anybody to talk to or work out with me, I get lax mm -hmm. if I don't have a gym membership. So th this is different because Russ is there. And I'm go, go, go. He mm -hmm. is. He goes every single day regardless of whether I do or not. Mm -hmm. So it helps me, you know, get down there and, and make sure that I get my workout in. And, and it, it's working. We're, I'm doing some of his exercises now. Yeah, which, which she's never done before. So that's A little different, a little mm -hmm. different, but it's working. But she winds up doing more for body parts than I think she's used to sometimes. <laughs> well, and I don't usually do shoulders because, I mean, I have big shoulders and... So I, I know that I used to, back when I played volleyball, I did chest, shoulders, and tries together. And of late, many past years, I've just done tr chest and tries, and shoulders have kind of gotten just a, a residual. And I did do shoulders for the first time, I think, last week. Yeah. And I, don't, I still don't do calves, though. I, I, do. I, do I figure when I bike ride, they get enough, enough calves. You're going to do calves right now as we speak. Um, so the other thing that we wanted to talk to you about is that we are going to be sending out Sometime in the near, reason, you know, reasonably near future, we're going to send out some kind of questionnaire asking you about how you make use of these webinars. Are you here live? Do you ask questions live? Do you watch the replay? Do you send in questions? Because we want to make sure that what we're doing is the most effective it can be for you and the most convenient it can be for us. And so if being here live isn't beneficial to a whole lot of you, then you know, maybe we'll do them recorded and just post them on the website. And that way, um, we don't it's have the same to, thing. Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing if you're, if you're not watching it live. And it, it saves us having to pay for Webinar Jam to be able to do these live if, you're, if, if there aren't a vast majority of you that use them live. So we are going to be sending that out, I don't know. It, we have this until August. So I'm guessing we'll yeah. do this through the summer at least. Right, exactly. Yeah, so do you have any thoughts about that? No, just that we'll see, uh, we have a service that we use and we'll see what it takes to get a uh, questionnaire sent out and we'll do it. Yeah, so, it. so watch for an email that you know, asks you and please do reply because you know, we can't benefit you if we don't know what you need. So exactly. make sure you reply. As I always say, make sure that you get your questions in, let us know how we can help you, what questions you have, what we can answer. Of course, if we come across anything specifically interesting, we'll make sure and share that uh, with you as well. And yeah. I did see Game Changers on Netflix again. We go through, oh. I saw it. So I'm going to plug that again if you haven't seen Game Changers. It's definitely worth a watch. It's definitely worth watching, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anything you need to add for them? Are we running? Oh, I'm no. a little over, only yeah. two minutes though. That's okay. No, I think I'm good. Okay. 
All right. Well, then we'll let these fine people get on with their evening. Okay, sounds good. And with that, we'll say, eat real food. Mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great night, Have guys. a good one. We'll see you later.